Let's discuss the basics of solar power. Welcome to DIY Volts. I'm Seth. Today I'm going to give you a crash course in the basics of solar power. If you're looking to install some solar panels to power up your house, you may be a little bit daunted at the amount of information available. Well, I'm hoping to give you a beginner's course on how to not only install panels, but also to understand the ins and outs of what you're getting into. So let's go ahead and step up here and talk about solar. My house has been running off grid now for over a year using the nine kilowatts of solar that you see on the hill behind me. Now you may hear the term solar array, which just means several panels put together, but you may also hear the term PV array. The PV stands for photovoltaic, and that is just the same as saying solar, so you can interchange those however you need to. There are two different types of solar panels that you see most often. There is polycrystalline and monocrystalline. This right here behind me is a polycrystalline panel. It is composed of multiple silicone pieces instead of a single piece. So there are a couple of differences between this and a monocrystalline. The cost, the color, and the efficiency. Whenever you have this type of panel, it's been manufactured with broken pieces or small pieces of silicone that come together. And so it is cheaper to produce and so oftentimes cheaper to purchase. It has a blue color because of those uh, broken and mismatched pieces. And it doesn't have quite the heat tolerance as the monocrystalline, which means it doesn't have quite the efficiency. Now with efficiency, we're talking about 18% efficient up to about 21 and a half. So, the range is still not very different between the monocrystalline and the polycrystalline. Whenever you install solar, you will most likely be working with rigid panels, such as these that I'm showing here in this video. But uh, there are newer technologies, such as shingles that go on a roof, or you can have flexible panels that go on top of a vehicle. But for a home install, you're typically gonna see these rigid panels. This is a 200 watt monocrystalline solar panel with a high efficiency of over 23%. Uh, Calpha is the brand name on this one. Now you may hear terms like watts, volts, and amps and wonder how those interact with each other. Well, let's go ahead and break down what those mean and how they work to produce the power of this panel. Somewhere on a solar panel, you're gonna find this data sticker typically on the back of the panel. So you can see here it says 200 watt rigid solar panel. That means this has a rigid aluminum frame and it has a power rating of 200 watts. Now watts is the power and that is found by multiplying the voltage by the current. So if you can see here, it's got 17.1 volts and the operating current is 11.7 amps. If you uh, multiply those two together, you get 200 watts. Now the open circuit voltage found right here is 20.1 volts and that is very important whenever you are linking these panels together either in parallel or in series, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. The short circuit current is also 12.3 amps and that's important because you're going to want to know that to make sure your equipment can handle the amps coming in. So the maximum system voltage is 600 volts DC, which means whenever you are combining panels together, you don't want to go above 600 volts. So how many of these panels can you combine at 17.1 volts before you hit 600 volts is what you want to look at. This particular panel weighs 26.2 pounds and has a dimension of 57 and a half by 30.3 and 1.4 inches thick. Let's discuss some practical numbers real quick and get into the meat and potatoes of this video. So let's say you want to have 1000 watts of solar power going into your home. Well, this right here is a 200 watt panel. I would have to have five of these to make 1000 watts. Now there are two different ways to connect panels. There's series and parallel. In order to connect panels through series, you take the positive of one panel and connect it to the negative of the next panel. And you take that positive into the negative, positive, negative, until you have one overall positive, one overall negative. When you connect solar panels in series, the voltage is going to add by the number of panels you have. So the open circuit voltage on this panel was 20 volts, which means we will have 100 volts by the time we have hooked up all of those panels. The amperage, however, is going to stay the same. 11.1 uh, amps, I think is what we discussed. So keep that in mind. So let's say you're charge controller, which is going to take the power coming in and feed it to a battery, can only handle a certain voltage, let's say 
60 volts up to uh, 200 volts, well, that 100 volts is going to be perfect. It's right there in the middle, so good to go on that. Now, let's say your charge controller can only handle uh, a lower voltage, say uh, 25 volts up to 75 volts. Hooking these panels up in series is not going to work. What we can do is do a parallel connection. Now you'd have to have either four or six panels to do this. Uh, you wouldn't want to do five like I have here. Um, so what you do is you buy a, an adapter that would allow you to connect all the positives together and then another one over here that allows you to connect all the negatives together and it'll have a single positive, single negative out from all those panels hooked up in parallel. What's going to happen then is the voltage is going to stay at the 20 volts but the amperage will uh, add. So you're now looking at, well, depending on four or six panels, um, 40 or 60 amps coming through these wires and the voltage being much lower. Now keep in mind that it's better to have as high a voltage as you can because amperage is going to cause heat in your wires and be less efficient. So I prefer to do as much in series as possible and then parallel as need be. That's where it gets tricky because you can do both series and parallel in systems. Most modern solar panels are going to have a connector called an MC4 connector. This is what they look like for the negative and the positive. It's also indicated here on the wire which one is which. These are quick connect and quick disconnect to allow you to operate these panels without much hassle having to twist together connections or use some kind of old school connector. So that's what those are called and they are quite handy to have. Most solar panels will have a fuse inside of this box so if a short circuit occurs you can change that fuse out and get the panel back up and running. Panels also have an aluminum frame with multiple options for mounting. So hole there, hole here, one down here as well. You'll also note there is a place for a ground. Now grounding your solar panels is important. The panel will operate without the ground installed, but you can have power back feed through the cables, or if a lightning were to strike near or on the panels, it will uh, go down the ground and hopefully not into your home. I have two of these 200 watt solar panels side by side. I wanna show you the difference between a parallel or a series connection. So I've got the negative of this panel over here. We're gonna set that aside and use the positive. I'm gonna go over here and get the negative of this panel. And I'm simply going to connect the MC4 connectors together. So now I have one negative and one positive. That right there is a basic series connection. So if I place this in the sun, we should see a much higher voltage between these two versus a single panel. Now today is a very overcast day, but we should still be able to see some results from using a multimeter to test out the voltage. So if I put the lead in the negative here, lead in the positive, we can see on my multimeter, hopefully you can see it, 18.8 volts on this panel. Now let's go ahead and connect these in series and see if that voltage doubles. I just linked these panels up in series. So I should be able to get a reading on here. 37.7 volts. So as you can see, the voltage has doubled whenever these panels were put in series. Now using these two adapters, I can demonstrate doing a parallel connection. If I take the negative of this panel and connect it up here, I can also take the negative of this panel and connect it up into this adapter. And then that's gonna give us a single negative. And if I connect the positive here to this other adapter and the positive here, I now have these two panels linked in parallel, which means the voltage is gonna be the same as if it were just one panel, but the amperage has now doubled. So that's the connection for using a parallel. I've now linked both the panels together using a parallel connection. Let's see if I can get a reading on these two. Okay, there we go, 18.7 volts. So as you can see, like I said before, whenever you link panels in parallel, it's gonna have the same voltage all the way across, but the amperage is doubled. The output of a solar panel like this is DC, which stands for direct current. A home is going to use AC power, which is alternating current. These two cannot be used directly together to do any kind of work. 
So you have to either use a micro inverter or a charge controller and inverter with battery system in order to convert this power to usable house power. Now with a micro inverter, you take multiple panels together and link them into a single box and it converts the power from DC into AC at 240 volts to be sent back into the home or to the grid. You have to have something called a bi-directional meter installed and that will tell the power company whether power is coming into the home or going out of the home so you can sell your power back. All of that requires uh, an engineer and all kinds of stuff to uh, be installed properly. The other option, which is what my home uses, is to go with a hybrid inverter, which will take the power from the solar panels through a charge controller, which basically takes a high voltage DC line and brings it into the batteries for storage. And then it goes to an inverter, which then converts that DC power into AC power at 120 volts at 60 hertz to be used in the home. That may sound like a lot of mumbo jumbo, but we will jump into the house system in a minute and I'll show you how all of that is put together. This is a micro inverter. It will take four different strands of solar into this inverter. As you can see, these MC4 connectors on the side, and it will send out a single AC line right here at 240 volts. And that will hook up directly to the main power coming into your home. And so you can either use this power in your home or if there's excess, it will be sent out to the grid to pay you back for your system. This is very popular in areas where you have uh, lots of sun. In my area, not so much. And so I keep all of my power in house used with the inverter system. So I will show you that next. This is my off grid system that has been powering the house for quite some time now. Now, if I were to go into each one of these components individually, it would be beyond the scope of this video. So let's go ahead and just do a basic overview of what's going on. Solar power comes into these two surge protectors, which help protect against lightning strikes. I have breakers so I can turn off the solar coming in. That solar then goes over here to this box, which is a hybrid charge controller and inverter. Basically, this takes the solar power coming in at a high voltage and converts it to this battery right here, which is a 51.2 volt system. So that power is stored inside of that. From there, it goes back to the inverter, same cables, and that's allowed to convert the uh, battery power, which is DC, into AC power, which then is able to power all of these circuits here in my home. And those are all things that are on all the time off grid. And that concludes my basic information video on solar panels and how they operate. As you can see, things can get into more detail pretty quick, especially when jumping into charge controllers, inverters, surge protectors, and breakers, and all of those things that you saw in the house. But we will get into that in a future video and also talk more about how panels are mounted and grounded in a future video as well. Stay tuned for those, and hopefully you have taken some good information home out of this video. I'm Seth with DIY Volts, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.